Episode 210, Till Death Do Us Part, as often with our titles, could apply to almost every one of our characters, almost all of whom, at any moment now, may find that death is going to do them part. No, darling. You're alive. DirecTV presents Salem Writer's Rap. We begin by finding Cotton being dragged out into the woods, almost mafia-style, to be executed by some of Hawthorne's henchmen. <laughs> to his great relief and our surprise, he's rescued by Alden. But Alden makes clear to Cotton that he's saved him for a very particular purpose. He believes he's going to have a boy in his hands who's going to need an exorcism. Cotton knows there's a good chance neither of them will survive what they're going to attempt to do. And he's determined to do one thing before he does this. I, Cotton Mather, take thee, Anne Hale, to be my wedded wife, till death do us part. It looks at that moment like they may never see each other again. We'll see. But it's a lovely moment to see these two characters having come all this way. Please come back to me. Now, meanwhile, our other star-crossed lovers, the real engine of Salem always, is Alden and Mary. You came. Not for you. We can see the pain with Mary. She's hidden so much from Alden, but she really wants him to know and to understand that all she cares about is saving their son. Where must I be baptized? So you can be born more powerful than before, with me at your side. This again, remember, is Lucifer's first human lover who's been working, if only for her own purposes, that she could have her lover back. Mary has learned something from Marburg. She's learned that trick that Marburg pulled back in episode five, of being able to be in two places at the same time, at least long enough to lay her hands on the sarcophagus. But she can't bear the sound of these soon-to-be victims of Marburg's there, and she stops to free them. And in doing so, in a funny way, she's rewarded. Oh, Isaac. It's a poignant moment because we can see that Isaac can no longer really trust Mary. Escape this place. I believed all you said. I was sure. I'm sorry if I'm no longer so certain. That will get more poignant yet, as we'll see. This is all leading to kind of a supernatural showdown. Nobody's really playing fair. And it's setting up a lot of what these next couple of episodes are going to be. In a very, very creepy moment, though, any doubt we have about the demonic presence within that boy is dissolved. Exorcism is not something to toy with. Save the boy before we lose him completely. There's an image there from arguably the greatest horror film of all time, The Exorcist. But we should remember, that was a true story. And in fact, much of the imagery you see originally in that film comes from descriptions from our period of what people possessed by the devil looked like. It's a horrific image. It doesn't come from The Exorcist. It comes from history. This Salem Writer's Wrap was brought to you by DirecTV. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV.